Uh, hi, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome right. to another episode of the Catholic Arena podcast. Um, uh, I'm Jerome, and I'm joined this evening uh, by Augustine. Uh, how are you doing, Augustine? Good, good. St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Always a good day. Uh, welcome break from Lent. So, yeah, could be doing worse. Yes, we have a, a bit of a break tomorrow, I suppose, if, if people are, are fasting. We, uh, it's traditionally a feast day, so uh, we're allowed to break any fast, like of sweets or that kind of stuff. Yeah, so um, yeah, so tonight we were going to talk about just about St. Patrick, um, just some of the things about him. Like one of the good things this year about everything else that's kind of happening is that um, there's no parade on and... That kind of means that uh, some of the usual stuff, people being in the pub and everything, while it's, you know, it's good fun to an extent, uh, it means that people can kind of focus on what the day is about itself. Um, and earlier there was a statement, um, Archbishop Martin released a statement earlier speaking about it. And he said that sometimes people get caught up in the legends and distractions around St. Patrick. And he said, you know, if you look at his writings, there's no mention of green beer, snakes, or even a shamrock. Now, of course, just because it's not in his writings, uh, it's a bit like our Lord's life, just because it's not in the, the writings about it um, doesn't mean it didn't happen. But I suppose the point he was making is that if you really want to get to know St. Patrick, you kind of have to get to know um, his his own words and his own life, as he described it. And, um, you know, so hopefully, I mean, Two two years ago, I think it was two years ago when we, uh, well, not we, not me and you, but when Ireland um, brought in that pubs were going to be open on Good Friday. And, mm. you know, it's it's an amazing turn of events. Here we are two years later and pubs are even closed on St. Patrick's Day. You know, so it's incredible yeah. what, what's happened. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um and I suppose St. Patrick's Day kind of, for me, it kind of always creeps up on me. And I, I, I kind of hear, listen to some um, readings about St. Patrick or maybe look at a YouTube video, but uh, then other things sort of happened. And I suppose that the thing that I suppose I'm trying to remember more every year is that it's not just St. Patrick's Day. You can you can learn about St. Patrick throughout the year because he is he is our patron saint and uh, he was a, an amazing figure. And uh, we do devote uh, justly a, a, a day in his honor. But um, I suppose it behooves us all to just be, become more familiar uh, with him. And I suppose that is the um, message of of today. We're, we're going to uh, speak about St. Patrick. We're going to keep this stream possibly uh, shorter than normal. Uh, hopefully, maybe under about twenty five minutes or so, um, referencing the, among other things, the confessio. Um, I had a, a look at it for the first time today, um, briefly, and I thought it was quite beautifully written. The way he even describes the Trinity and the everlasting nature of God. Um, yeah, it's it's just very very moving. Yeah, it's um, for anyone who who hasn't read it before. If you, if you go to the website confessio.ie, it has the full text there and it has it in English and um, in other languages too. And you can also get a, the, there's a shorter text on it, um, the Epistola. Uh, but the Confessio is a really good one. It's the story of his life. And the amazing thing about Patrick is, um, you know, we've mentioned before how one of the problems that Ireland's having is that it's getting caught up in all this other stuff going on in the, in the West about, um, you know, the original sin of uh, Western civilization that, you know, we were colonizers and we were slave owners and all this stuff. And it's the incredible thing about Patrick is that he was a slave. And in his slavery, you know, he turned to faith and he, he there's no anger in in what he wrote. It's, um, it's very beautiful. And you can see that his faith brought him to uh, out of slavery, not just in terms of spiritual slavery, which he's in at the start of it, because he he doesn't really live a life of faith. But it brings it actually has a, his vision, and it brings him out of um, physical slavery that way too. Uh, but it brings him out of a spiritual one too. So it's a um, it's a great document, and and he comes across as really humble, doesn't he? 
It really does, yeah. That that's one of the things that struck me the most. Um, I suppose it was it was a little bit uh, in, um, kind of jarring too to see the emblems of the Irish government um, plastered all over the footer of this. Um, we're not used to the Irish government uh, proclaiming and and amplifying such a, a beautiful message of of uh, of faith in in God. It was, it was nice that the, it still exists uh, in government circles to some aspect. It's it's. It, I think the Royal Irish Academy um, hosts this confessio.ie, and that which is mostly funded by the government. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it's funny because it is kind of a basic website. It's a very good website because there's loads of other uh, historical stuff on it as well. Um, the records of Patrick's life from Merku and Tira Khan, um, who were medieval monks, and and they recorded. Um, the, the life of Patrick um, and there's other little articles on it about St. Patrick and art and stuff like that. But it's a simple website, but the stuff in it's really good, but it's interesting because um, they plastered their name all over it. But I mean, they clearly haven't like put a fortune into this website. You know what I mean? Like they're happy to say yeah, yeah our names on it, but, that you know, um, but yeah. dude, like there, there was a couple of things in it. Like, was there anything in particular that stood out for you when you read it? in terms of like uh, any experiences he had i didn't i didn't really get at that far I, I pretty much just made it to to chapter four um yeah but uh just just the way he does the the thing that got got to me was like he, he he describes in a lot of detail the eternal nature of god and the, the t obviously the timeless aspect and yeah, it's it's good that that I mean you don't really see that written anymore today. It's kind of like assumed, but it's it is a helpful mm. to to actually see it, like written for for anyone to see. Um, for even a practicing Catholic, it's just useful to just reflect on that. And he he would have seen it with with new eyes. I mean, he's only a couple of centuries apart from from Christ Himself, you know. So um, yeah, it's. It's kind of you can and and then but the the thing is I mean he may as well have been on he was on the other side of the known world at the time really you know so it's it's incredible when you read it you can see his kind of wonder with God you know and you can see his um his humility in the face of 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 God's greatness so it's um I think people could could really do it reading it but the what like the amazing thing is um. I know you're saying like you didn't get too far into it, but what I say to people is you don't even have to get too far into it. If you actually get into the first uh, the first eight words, my name is Patrick. I am a I am a sinner. Um, you know, it's it's very humble yeah. and it's it's a world apart from um, some of the negative connotations people try to put on the the faith and stuff. You know, he starts with the fact that he's Patrick, but he's a sinner. Um, so it, maybe that's kind of where his humility comes from. There, he acknowledges that, you know. Um, but just on uh, for, just on for someone of, as holy as him, yeah. It just struck me for someone as as holy as Saint Patrick to just to just to just admit to being a sinner, whereas today it's um sin is almost passe and and you shouldn't feel guilty about anything and what is a sin anyway it's just this relic of this like backwards like a uh, um religion um according to like uh, a lot of people on uh, social media anyway i don't know if you saw um elton john today talking about the pope did you see that no well, uh, Elton John said, oh, I suppose to give him some credit, I mean, he had a he had half a fair point. But I mean, so he, he said, you know, like there were, he was one of many people given out about the uh, decision yesterday that the Vatican released. It wasn't a decision. It was clarification about uh, whether or not they could bless same sex marriages. And Elton John was saying, like, you know, how dare you not bless my marriage? And he said. You know, but yet you'll invest in my movie. Now, to be fair, I was kind of like, "What they invested in his movie?" Which they did. The film Rocket Man. Apparently, the Vatican invested millions in it and made loads of money from it, which is really? bizarre. Yeah. Um, but incredible. that just kind of that just sums up a lot of stuff going on there with with money in the Vatican. But 
Um, but the other one, the other well, part it's, of it's was, probably yeah. it, it's it's probably I'm, I'm sure some like high ranking um, cardinal in uh, the financial department of the Vatican didn't invest it in directly. It's, it's it was probably um, the the Vatican routinely invests in um, mutual funds and in investment vehicles, which probably contained the production company that made Rocket Man. So I'm sure it right, was it right. was a lot more indirect than Elton John is talking about. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, um, hopefully. Anyways, they didn't yeah. go. Wow, this this sounds great. Um, but the point he like he what really seemed to rile people was the word that God couldn't bless sin. That seemed to really have like wound people up, you know, the notion of of sin. And, um, you know, people have to, everyone, everyone has to start with the, um, start with the premise that, you know, we're all very small people in the context of the universe and, and we're not perfect, but I suppose sin is the one that really jars with people. And for Patrick, I guess the thing is just acknowledging it frees them, you know, but for other people, maybe the fact that they can't acknowledge it gets them all, um, Gets them into all sorts of uh, problems with how they view themselves, you know. And um, uh, like you know, as a as a country, I feel like that's where we're at now. People find it very hard to acknowledge um, that idea of sin, you know. Yeah, uh, it was. I was. I thought it was quite amusing to see all these like um, stars and like uh, um, Jedward <laughs> to, to talk about like. Uh, <laughs> Almost like how how dare the Pope um, not fully endorse something which the Church has always said it doesn't endorse. Uh, the the Vatican has been quite careful, maybe more in in recent decades, to um, to to clarify that homosexuals are worthy of God's love, of course, and but that they fundamentally. believe that and of course could they then give a blessing to something that they fundamentally don't agree with i mean it doesn't even make sense and and these people given out about it i mean they're not catholic i mean why what i i really don't see i'm kind of scratching my head why they're even sticking their their beaks in you know yeah i mean when i you know um when i drink beer or eat a steak you know I don't think to myself, um, I can't believe Muslims or Hindus don't approve of this, you know? And I know that's different, but do you know what I mean? Like, I don't see how yeah. my, my own actions could be dependent on uh, the interpretation from another faith. And um, I suppose, like, it kind of reminds us of the, the culture that Patrick grew up in, which is, or that, or that he came back to when he came back to Ireland, which is that, the, he didn't look for the approval of the pagans. He just decided he was going to light the fire, uh, the Paschal fire, um, on top of the hill of Slain. And he just said, "Look, I don't really care," <laughs> you know. And he didn't he didn't look for their uh, approval. He just he was just looking for God first. And it's um, yeah, I think people have to remember that that it wasn't any easier back then. In some ways, it was probably even more difficult. I know. You weren't bombarded with social media all the time, but you know, in some ways, it was more difficult because he could have been killed for for opposing their ways. Yeah, yeah, that that's the thing. Like because it was like a uh, pagan Ireland. I mean, it wouldn't have been um, that would have been probably more like in, in pagan times, murder was not uh, the the egregious like um, violation of human integrity that it would be under Christianity. Yeah. Um, and that's it. And he wrote um, in the other letter that he wrote, uh, he said, I'll just, I'll just read the passage real quick. He said, the Christians of Rome and Gaul uh, have the custom of sending holy and chosen men to the Franks, and to other pagan peoples, with so many thousands in money to buy back the baptized who, who have been taken prisoner. Because, of course, he could have been taken slave as well. You, on the other hand, kill them and sell them to foreign peoples who have no knowledge of God. 
you hand over the members of Christ, as it were, to a brothel, which is uh, an interesting one. I don't know what it says in the footnote there. Okay. Oh, apparently that's a, a quote mm. from 1 Corinthians 6.15. You take members of Christ's body and join them to the body of a prostitute. There you go. That's the, mm. the reference it gives me on that. So uh, Then it says, what hope have okay. you in God? Who approves of what you do or whoever speaks word of praise, God will be the judge for it is written. Not only do the doers of evil, um, but also those who go along with it are to be condemned. So that's an interesting one that, um, yeah, because the interesting thing is uh, uh, the likes of Patrick, people like that, that would have had a good knowledge of the Bible. But it's interesting that he mentions that not only the people who do evil, but the people who go along with it are to be condemned. That's that's a really powerful one. Yes, because it's that ties in with with cowardice, uh, the cowardice of not um, standing up against a, a wrong, is is as bad as as the person uh, leading uh, the wrong. I think. Yeah, and so, um, so it's in, like it's interesting to think today that. Um, We've had, I mean, sometimes people say, you know, if, if if bad stuff keeps happening, you know, why doesn't God just intervene and fix it? And you look at Ireland now, and I mean, go back, go back three years ago, almost three years ago now, and um, the the events in Dublin Castle, which we won't mention, but yeah. it's, you know, you were kind of saying to yourself, you know, how, you know, how, how is this going to resolve itself? It's just getting worse and worse. And I don't know, here we are now, and it feels like, I don't know, it feels like God is putting manners on people for, for throwing a tantrum at them, and that's not a comment on saying he makes people sick or anything, but it's kind of saying, well, you know, people were very proud of themselves a couple of years ago, and things have, people have been humbled now. Well, that's that was um, kind of referenced in the first verse of the Confessio, I was taken into captivity in Ireland along with thousands of others. We deserved this because we had gone away from God and did not keep his commandments. We would not listen to our priests who advise us about how we could be saved. The Lord brought his strong anger upon us and scattered us among many nations, even to the ends of the earth. So, like, uh, our freedom is constrained now. Um uh, more and more people are turning away from the church. Uh, the church is really on the back, but the church is almost on a daily basis. It's 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 assailed in maybe not in the media, but certainly social media. So uh, yeah, there there's parallels today with like um, our freedom being to take away being to take away in this era of coronavirus. And is that um, some kind of punishment from God? I mean. Yeah. Who knows? And even it's, it's not completely. Yeah. yeah, and even his um his approach um his approach is kind of what what Christ said, which is that you know before you try to fix other people, fix yourself first, and that's that's really what he does, you know. And he says at, just after the sentences you read, the next sentence is, "It was among foreigners that it was seen how little I was. It was there that the Lord opened up my awareness." Um, of my lack of faith even though it came about late i recognized my feelings my failings so i turned with all my heart to the lord my god and he looked down on my lowliness and had mercy on my youthful ignorance so mm. you know it comes with it comes with him looking inside first and fixing himself and so um i suppose the message the hopeful message in in the confessio for irish people is that you know, if we work hard, those of us who are still in the church and trying to fix the church, if we work hard and trying to purify it from within, um, even just give it a bit of vitality, give it a bit of life, um, you know, it, it, it can, by fixing the church from the inside first, then we can start moving out to the world again, you know. Do, do you have any, like... Uh, uh specific examples or of what people could do um i would say you know i always just tell people one of the big things to do is is get familiar with the lives of the saints because 
Mm. Um, you know, Patrick, you could tell people just go to a Latin mass, but I mean, you know, it's that it mightn't resonate with everybody. You could say to people, um, you know, just go to mass every Sunday. But I mean, that doesn't, mm. it's, those are instructions. It's not really um, uh, inviting people to kind of uh, have their lives, um, you know, uh, enlightened by this stuff. I think a, a good yeah. piece of advice I'd say to people is study lives of the same. And Patrick, uh, Bridget, um, but then other more recent ones too. Um, you know, you have people who are nine to be saints from Ireland, like, Frank Duff and Adel Quinn and but then you have people like Little Nelly of Holy God and you have a rich tradition in Ireland even recently so that's it look at the, these are real lives look at them and then by looking at them you can trust people to, to imi imitate them that's the big thing I would say does anything come to your mind? No, th that's that's a great point um, what I first I, I think it was there's an author, I think his name is, is it Scott Hahn? Yeah. Yeah, he wrote a book about the saints. I got an, an audio book. And one of the things that struck me about it is these were just like people with flaws like everyone else had. But they, they battled to them. They worked really hard. A lot of times these people were degenerates. Sometimes they were murderers. Or sometimes they were just like... Um, they came from other um, professions and they came around uh, to faith. And some of the things that they, they did uh, to, to prove their love for God and to do good works and to um, um, spread God's word. It was, some of it is actually quite, uh, it's really intriguing and challenging um, just, just they're just very, very interesting and, and inspirational people. It's what I always think about it of, of these saints is they kind of have the whereas like most people just see maybe a few years ahead, maybe a, a, a decade ahead or a couple of decades. But these people almost not almost they they look ent entirely past their own lives. They look entirely past any concept of even having any, sometimes even having any shred of comfort again for the rest of their lives, um, even to the extent of voluntarily taking on pain, um, just to remind themselves to of the sacrifice that 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 Jesus suffered, um, and there was like ex like some saints who were were prostitutes. Uh, um, mercenaries, just really Satanists, you know, <laughs> Satanists, just really interesting stuff. And um, yeah, that's a great point. Starting with the lives of the saints, because it kind of comes from there. And from getting into what what drove them, a lot of times, it, it, well, most of the time, it would just inspire people. Oh, what what does? How is this liturgy so important? And then. I think that is the proper way to go about it because then people will really want, they'll be attracted to the, the liturgy and the canon of the mass and, and what does the Eucharist actually mean? Um, that's, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, and I, I suppose just to, just to finish off, just the last two verses of Confessio, again, if you haven't read it before, you, you could read it, you know, very quickly this evening or, um, the last couple of verses says again and again I briefly put before you the words of my confession I testify in truth and in great joy of heart before God and his holy angels that I never had any other reason for returning to that nation from which I had earlier escaped except the gospel and God's promises I pray for those who believe in and have reverence for God some of them may happen to inspect or come upon this right in which Patrick a sinner without learning wrote in Ireland May none of them ever say that whatever little I did or made known to please God was done through ignorance. Instead, you can judge and believe in all truth that it was a gift of God. This is my confession before I die. So he wrote this at the end, uh, towards the end of his life. And he said, you know, he came to Ireland just to spread God's message. And, you know, sometimes just keeping it simple like that is, uh, is the best way to convey it to people.
he, that was yeah it's 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 a beautiful little message isn't it it's um yeah not that long like there's um what is it 62 verses some verses are four lines some are yeah. ten but it's it's um it's very digestible especially when it's broken down like that yeah and there's just like a, a, you know there's um a lot of it is about how you know there's there's one particular part of it where he talks about how when he was a slave and it was so cold and it was so whatever and he said that you know he would get up every day and he'd go out and pray and he he'd pray during the night he'd pray during the day and so you know it's it there's a lot of simple advice in there which is very practical for people you know which is um which is about just pray and 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 ask for God's help and accept you're a sinner and just just go from there, you know. Accept God's grace into your life. Yeah, yeah, um, really nice, really something. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I guess a happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Um, you know, stay home, stay safe. Exactly. Thanks, thanks, um, Augustine, and uh, thanks to all you uh, listening. Um, we're trying to get. Um, our numbers up on the YouTube page. So uh, please, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. If you, if you like our work and if, uh, if you like this, um, we love a, a like on, on the video and, and a comment. Um, and yeah, just, just tell your friends uh, and even feedback for uh, ideas for, for topics to talk about, or um, at some point soon, we we'll, we plan to bring on um, guests from, from various, aspects of of the faith in, in ireland uh, to talk about various subjects so uh yeah just um uh, like and subscribe yeah um okay chat to you later jerome chat to you later everybody all the best thanks Will. all right take care